Hey there, Joel with Power Stance Import Export. And if you came across this video through an eBay listing, thanks for watching. That's what these videos are for. But if you happen to come across it through a random YouTube search or suggestion, and you have any questions about the vehicles, feel free to contact us at Power Stance Import Export on Facebook or Instagram. And you can call us at the number listed below as well, anytime. And uh, we are one of the largest suppliers of Land Rover Defenders in Michigan and most of the Midwest. So give us a call. Thanks. Hello, and up for sale today, I've got a 1990 Land Rover Defender 90. This is the first year of the Defender and the first year for the 200 TDI turbo diesel. So this is an import from the UK, so it is right-hand drive. It is now located here in Michigan and comes with a clean, clear Michigan title. Now, normally I do my videos outdoors, uh, but since it's a little bit chilly out, it's probably about 10 degrees, uh, a nice chilly January day in Michigan. I figured I'd do the video here in the heated garage. So, uh, and for and for those of you non-Americans watching, that's about negative 12 Celsius. Um, so it's a bit nippy out. Uh, anyways, I'll do the same, same spiel, show you the inside, the outside, the underside, and we'll go for a test ride. All right, so firstly, let me say this vehicle is going to be priced at the bottom of the market um, it's a good running unit, but it does have some cosmetic issues. Um, everything necessary to run and drive on a daily basis is good to go. Brakes are good. Engine's good. Gearbox is good. Center diff's good. Everything runs and drives and operates the way it should, but, uh, it does have a little bit of rust and a little bit of corrosion here and there, and I will walk you around the vehicle and I will show you all of that. So paint job. This is not original. Um, original color was Arla's blue. This is called Byrus blue. This is also a Land Rover color. Uh, it does have a little bit of metallic flake in it, so it is quite glossy and shiny. Um, but the only thing I can really fault on the paint job is that they might not have done the best prep work when they were painting, getting ready to paint it, because some of the little crevice areas that are hard to get to seem to be flaking off, like right there at the roof. And they did paint over some rubber seals as well, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, but other than that, the paint job looks nice and glossy. I would say it's probably about seven or five to ten years old, give or take. There are some scratches and swirl marks pretty much over the entire paint job. So it's, it's seen some wear and tear. Um, so here is the passenger door. A little bit of a dent here above the handle. And some corrosion at the bottom just on the door skin itself the frames of the doors are actually in really good shape um, i can't see if there has been any welding at all normally it would be right here but that looks pretty factory so i'm guessing these doors are newer and they just have uh, some corrosion on the outer skins moving on to the uh, interior here I'll grab my flashlight the foot wells have been worked on. Uh, there's a little bit of welding done right there in the corner. Floorboards are in decent shape. And uh, the seating area, we've got three seats, no center cubby box. Center diff moves freely up and down to uh, into the lock position and into the high-low position as well. We've got a nice little uh, pool ball shifter, which is pretty sweet little bobblehead cactus guy we're gonna leave that um on the roof here there's a little bit of uh paint wear uh it looks like there was probably a roof rack on here and something or they they strapped something to the roof and it rubbed the paint off because that's not a scratch that's like paint being rubbed off so it's like that on both sides so there is a little bit of paint damage on the roof rear sliding glass windows now the cappings are in great shape. There's no rust there. We do have a nice set of General Grabber TRs. Uh, it's a good trail tire. And the Defender Boost alloy five spoke wheels. So let me show you the back side of the rear cross member here. That's brand new. The guys at Northwest Defenders welded this on right before it shipped over here. And they also welded on these uh, center Outriggers as well. So those are in decent shape. It's a big job out of the way. All right, moving on here to the back. 
corners are in great shape as well. And uh, probably the most corroded area on this vehicle is the rear door. As you can see, there's quite a bit of corrosion on the door. Um, and let's open it up. Take a look at the actual door frame. A little bit of a rust hole here. And on the bottom, some rust as well. So good thing is that these rear doors aren't that expensive. So that could be replaced quite easily. Now in the back here, uh, there's a good shot of the new rear cross member as well. Uh, in the back here, we've got four inward facing jump seats. We do have an internal dog cage. So if you wanna keep your pets in the back and keep them from jumping up on the front seats, you can shut this little door here and close it off. It's got some storage up here. And uh, we do have some rear speakers as well. And it looks like the rear wiper and rear defrost are still wired up. That's a good thing. Spare tire is mounted to the rear door, which does shut nice and square. Now we do have a little bit of paint touch up going on here. Um, cappings though and the corners are all in good shape on the driver's side as well. A little bit more corrosion on the bottom of the rear door. New set of mud flaps. European style hitch. Again, general grabbers on all four corners. Wheel flares are all in good shape. Rear sliding windows on the driver's side as well. Got a new set of hinges. Driver's door is in a little bit better shape. Not too much corrosion. There's a little bit right here in the bottom corner. But again, the frames are in good shape. And get the door to stay open. Nice and clean. Take a look at the foot wells on the driver's side. So there has been a little bit of metal work here as well. Those have been welded up. Pretty decent shape. The back side of the bulkhead. No rust there either. So those are in good shape. Okay, so let's go ahead and start it up. We got 174,000 miles on the clock. Glow plug light comes on and off. Fires right up. No warning lights. Fuel light's working, temperature gauge is working, clock is even working. Engine's running nice and smooth. Nice clean looking oil. No blow by or back pressure. And we're indoors here, so there's no smoke, no smoke coming out of the tailpipe either. Running nice and smooth. Okay, so let's take it for a spin. I'll show you the uh, gear changes, acceleration, braking, and all that good stuff. Um, as you can hear right now, the heat is blowing nice and strong. Fuel gauge is working, temperature gauge. So I'm going to shut the uh, the fan off for audio's sake and. Um, you know, each Defender is it's got its own little personality and different in each way. Uh, this one seems to actually be pretty quiet on the interior. I don't know how they did that, but a little quieter than normal. So there's second gear, third gear, and it accelerates nicely. The engine runs great. I'm not smelling any kind of burnt oil or anything like that. Uh, no smoke coming out of the tailpipe on acceleration. So it seems to be running really good. Uh, it is super cold out right now, so the suspension, uh, it, it's bumping kind of hard. And downshift from third gear. I think it just needs to warm up a little bit. Uh, the shocks maybe uh, past their prime like need to be replaced. But uh, we're going to downshift in the second gear here. Other than that, it runs great, drives smooth, alignment's nice and straight, the steering wheel uh, dead on, and um, gear changes are nice and quiet, no clunking, nothing coming out of the driveline, uh, universal joints sound good, wheel, uh, wheel flanges are good, um, so, you know, nice and solid. 
sneaky bit of a pull to the right there. Uh, no vibration though in the brakes. We are on a crowned road and the vehicle is going to want to go that way. But I think, I think it was pulling a tiny bit to the right. Which could be some air in the, the brake lines. Um, but nothing too serious. Uh, okay, so here's reverse. Try that braking again right in the middle of the road and see what happens. Okay, that's better. Okay, so it was just the crown in the road pulling the car to the right, so the brakes are good as well. And uh, we'll give it some beans now. As you can hear, there's no plunging in the gear changes. Nice and solid. I'm dropping the clutch pretty hard. And so everything uh, in the gearbox and the driveline is really nice. Okay, so let's take a look at the underside here. And uh, there's our nice brand new rear cross member. Exhaust looks pretty decent. Um, I think this thing could use a good power washing. It is quite dirty under here. Uh, looks like we do have a slight leak coming out of the fill plug of the rear axle here. Um, but yeah, it could use some wire brushing. Maybe a little chassis paint here though. Brake lines look nice and solid. Chassis is solid. Just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Okay, so let's go to the front. Okay, on our way to the front here, we're gonna take a look at the center. Drive shaft looks decent. No leaking coming out of the rear axle. Center diff looks pretty clean. Maybe a slight leak. It's coming out of somewhere from the top, maybe. Um, doesn't look too bad, though. I've definitely seen worse. Maybe just a little bit dirty. Um, I actually don't see any oil dripping or anything like that. So that's in pretty good shape. Front drive shaft. Front axle, nice and dry. Oil pan. Uh, pretty typical for a Land Rover to have a leaky sump seal. So that's probably going to need to be done. And here we are at the front of the vehicle. Uh, this is the driver's side swivel. Looks pretty uh, decent, holding in the oil pretty well. Um, and pretty much same story up front. Uh, pretty dirty. Could use a good scrub, a good power wash. Replace a few wearable parts here and there. Um, Steering dampener, uh, the bushing there seems a little dry rotted and the steering dampener itself has probably reached the end of its life. It's a little bit rusty. Um, underside of the engine here, uh, a little bit oily and almost guaranteed the culprit for that is the sump seal as well. That's about a half an hour job to an hour. You got to remove the oil pan, clean it up and put a new sealant on there, a new gasket and you're good to go. Uh, passenger side swivel, same thing, pretty clean. A little bit moist underneath there, um, but that's kind of typical, actually. Uh, under the bumper here at the jack points, those are uh, those are pretty seriously corroded, um, the bumper itself as well. But again, that's just uh, unbolt it, put a new bumper on. But uh, all in all, it's a good running vehicle. It runs and drives great. Just needs some minor mechanical stuff nothing imperative and then also some cosmetic stuff all right